and Donald Trump Great point. guaranteed one thing at every one of his rallies. Entertainment. Entertainment factor, absolutely. Yeah. He guaranteed a show. He was going to say something We call that nuts. ratings. We call right. it ratings. Right. He, he was going to say and something crazy. He was going to say something nuts, and it was going to get coverage, and he was on the news every night. Uh, we just came off an incredible, historic moment in the election, the 2016 presidential election, uh, with the culminating in the victory of Donald Trump. Um, we realize that this is an incredible moment to have a special edition where we'll talk about the race, the outcome, and what takeaways there could be. There's a lot of lessons that can be learned, especially from the fact that it, fundamentally it was an entrepreneur that won the presidentship of the United States of America. In, live in studio, we have none other than Kalman Yeager and Michael Fragan. Kalman, Michael, thank you for joining me here on Mind Your Business. Thank, thank you. To great to be here. Thanks. Uh, this is going to be an incredible show. Let's just jump in. You know what? I would want to start by even going back to some of your experience. Michael, I think, was in the, in the 04 Bush race. And right. then you were in the Pataki administration. I was that, back during those times. Amazing. Yes, it's been, it feels like a long time since then. My, how the Republican Party You're has not changed that old. <laughs> in those days. Uh, now that uh, you know Donald Trump was a New York figure back then, but who <laughs> back then would have thought that in 2016, certainly not most of the Republican intelligentsia, and I don't know if you can wor use the word intelligentsia anymore about the political punditry class, because if, if people are out there telling you that they got it right, they're, they're lying. Well, they're lying. I don't use, like to use the word lying on there. That's more of a re democratic term, at least in this <laughs> race. But uh, but yes, they're lying. Well, actually, I, I think uh, I think your candidate or your party's candidate was the one, the first one who coined the term lying uh, as a lion related Ted. lion Ted. That's right. Uh, so, you know, I'm not sure yeah. that Democrats are the ones who often sling the accusations of lies, but uh, it's not. It is true, Michael. There, there is nobody who can honestly tell you that they call this. Um, there are people who felt one way or another, but, you know, nobody woke up Tuesday morning and said, when I go to sleep at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, Donald Trump is going to be president elect. Let me just talk about some general uh uh, a general look back at the at the race, and and again, feel free to answer in any which way you wish. The media. Now, to us in the room, it's obvious there was a bias, but I'll just ask the question this way: Do you feel a media bias against Donald Trump? I, you know, I, I'll I'll take this first, okay. uh, Michael. I mean, you know, I, I believe I believe there was a media bias in the broad sense. Um, but I think it's a vicious cycle when it comes to a media bias because I think that it worked in, in, a, in, a very, in a very circular fashion. The media bias was a response by the media to the way Trump was treating the media, which turned into a bias against Trump, which so, exasperated the, 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 right, the reaction, which turned the bias even right. stronger that to the point where— just, and right. spiraled. And so a lot of what—you know, when Trump would say something that was demonstrably untrue, and I think everybody at this table, including a Republican, could admit that a lot of what Trump was saying was demonstrably not true, and then the media would debate amongst themselves, well, are we allowed to call him a liar? Uh, you know, we're reporters. We're supposed to be independent. But if we know something's not true, can we call them a liar? So then they run, you know, let's pick the New York Times. They run a, a, a front, top of the fold, uh, front page story that goes into and takes a full broadsheet on Donald Trump not being truthful about pick your issue. And then Trump says, well, that's a completely unfair story. You are crooked media. You're liars. Well, OK, well, what do you think the reporters are going to do then? Well, you can, the liar calling me a liar. We're going to call you back a liar. So there the absolutely was a bias, but it was circular. It was institutional. It was across the board. I don't necessarily believe it was an unfair bias, though. Um, I believe there was a bias that you just see. On the other hand, uh, there, there, you know, when we talk about the media, it's not just the New York Times, uh, you know, and and you know, NBC, but right. the media includes the Breitbart's. The media includes the Huffington Post, which is biased in a different direction. Right. News the Max, media Fox. is a lot, and right. uh, certainly okay. Fox, certainly CNN, certainly MSNBC. So you have a lot of media that's not your standard New York Times reporter with credentials around their neck, but but even and even beyond the cable TV news media, you have a lot of the. Uh, web-based media, right. and, you know, the Breitbarts, right. which is clearly a biased media. You have Drudge Report. That's media. That's a very biased media. So there's a lot of media that was biased in favor of Trump. Does it balance out? 
you know, I'm not a mathematician when it comes to these things, but gotcha. I do believe that that the bias was in both directions, and certainly it doesn't appear that it hurt Trump at the end. Oh, I'm, I'm going to get to that, but first, Michael, do you want to touch so on that? I'll make three points on that. Uh, I'll try and make them very succinctly so we can get to the next point here, is that I think the media was biased towards Trump during the primary. He got far and away more coverage than any other, any Repu- any nominee of any party could have gotten in any contest. Uh, He dominated the airwaves over and over. Partly that's because he's very good at the media. He's very good at getting covered. and But he did that. And some of the network executives admitted and they conceded about the fact that they covered him because of ratings and because he was good coverage. Number two is that Trump in the general election really had not been oppo researched. The other Republican candidates inexplicably, and I can't figure this out, they just one of the first things I do as a political professional is common does also. You're running at a race, you do two types of opera research. You do it on your own candidate, and then you do it on the other guy or the other people that you're running against. Nobody did it on Trump. All the stories that came out during the general election probably should have come out during the primary. It, it's inexplicable that it didn't happen. And the media didn't do any of that. They didn't do any of those stories. They didn't get. They didn't do on the taxes. They didn't do anything. I mean, there's all kinds of things that you could. The Cuba thing. I mean, there's all kinds of things that could have gone out. And and as Colin said, none of it mattered. And that gets me to my third point: mm-hmm. is as uh, Stephen Colbert back in the old days when he was still with John Stewart is called truthiness, and that's kind of what we have now in our political discourse. We ha- we're in a state of truthiness. That there really isn't one truth. There's the truth as the elites in Washington, New York, L.A., and on the two coasts see it. And then there's the truth as a lot of other Americans see it. And it's a little bit difficult to have a debate around when things are just truthy as opposed to true because you don't really know. And as political professionals, it's a difficult landscape to deal with because you don't know what people are actually going to believe in the end. Uh, I think – I will tell you, even if since we're this is you know since we both deal a lot with the Orthodox community, truthiness is a real problem with a lot of people because there is such a tendency to believe every single WhatsApp, uh, mm-hmm. what message that you get, and people just well immediately they've already forwarded it to thirty thousand people, and everybody th- believes, of course, that that that's exactly what happened. So it's it's really quite incredible when that happens, but that is the landscape. So. Overall, is there a bias? Look, everybody has biases. I don't believe that your average reporter working for the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal or very well vetted Washington Post uh, is a out there to get a certain candidate. What I believe is they're out there to get every candidate. Every reporter wants a scoop. Everybody wants to get something uh, that nobody else has. And therefore, that's how they work. Okay. So okay. Well, that, that, that's definitely true. I mean, I want to go back to the primary for a second because you know you're right. There was an incredible amount of coverage, and the truth is that if Donald Trump had to pay for the coverage, uh, you know, like other like candidates, they said it was were, over two billion dollars. Uh, unqu- uh, it, and it's phenomenal because you know we because we, he spent almost no money. He on the spent primary. almost no yeah. money in the primary, and so when we talk about you know doing races and we talk about free media and er, you know earned media and paid media, and Donald Trump got. All earned media. Why? Right. A lot of it had to do with the fact that most in the media didn't believe he would ever right. move past the first state or two or even if he would get there. So it was really, you know, the equivalent of rubbernecking on a highway, a really bad accident. <laughs> you know, you just you can't turn your eye away. You want to. You have to because you got to keep going straight. But you got to see what just happened. And and Donald Trump guaranteed one thing at every one of his rallies. Entertainment. Entertainment factor. Absolutely. Yeah. He guaranteed a show. He was going to we call that nuts. ratings. We call right. it ratings. Right. He, he was going to say and something crazy. He was going to say something nuts. And it was going to get coverage. And he was on the news every night. And he was clearly talking to a part of America when he was doing that. And the rest of America saying, this guy's going well, nowhere. And, right. when, so and, that, wait, yeah. when, and when he's on the news, that means somebody else is, is not on the news. Right. And that's what Amazing. Scott Walker found immediately. That's what Rick Perry found immediately. These guys just get, there was no oxygen left for them. For them to do, and that happened in the debates also, because they had this—they have this ridiculous re- debate rule, which I think it—it it just defies any logic. That if your name gets mentioned by the other candidate, you are entitled to a response, thirty seconds. So if you only have an hour and you have seven, you have ten candidates right. to begin with, and everybody has to be able to respond to the first guy, how many questions are you going to get? And to if ask? they're all me- if they're all mentioning Trump, he's yeah. going to respond to everybody. Time. Right. So it just—it uh, <laughs> it just defies it. it 
well, that makes it. But that is indicative. That's not media bias against Trump. That's media bias for Trump. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the reality is putting 17 candidates on a stage or whatnot in, during the Republican primaries was guaranteed chaos. And that's what the party got. And it's not, you know, it's not limited to Republicans. It just happened to be limited to Republicans this time. Let me ask you this question. Sure. If, if Twitter did not exist, would Trump have won? You know, look. And uh, I obviously you could say, okay, but it's Facebook. But I'm, you, you get the the, if, I, the gist of the question. If Texas didn't exist, would Trump have won? I mean, the reality is that Twitter does exist. It's hard to look at this election in in the light of not having social media, of not having a Donald Trump or, or on any Twitter. election, or any point. election. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, I remember elections when Twitter was first coming out, and I was one of the. You know, I'm not going to say that I said Twitter's just a fad; it'll pass. But I was as as. Uh, you know, uh, uh, professional in politics, you want to control the message very carefully, and you can't right. when you have a candidate who has a BlackBerry right. or or an iPhone and is tweeting random thoughts. And so you say, no, we're not going to be on Twitter. And that was sustainable, sure, in 09 and 10 and 11. But at some point, it became an, an unsustainable thought that you could run a campaign and not be on Twitter. 12, 13, 14, today we're now in 16 and moving into 17. Yeah. You can't not be on Twitter. You have to be able to control your candidate. But the reality is that not controlling Donald Trump didn't seem to hurt him. Well, it did at certain times. I mean, let's not let's not kid ourselves. The the damage that what the most damage that was done to Donald Trump during the campaign was by Donald Trump. Always. Nobody else was able to really lay a, a, a very good hand on him, but he was able to do it to himself. Uh, which, yeah, we haven't gotten into the conclusion right. of the campaign as We're far as that. There. But that I, I believe that he did uh, inflict damage on himself. There's no right. question that. Um, you know, he he was able at the end to change the change the election from a referendum on him to a referendum on Hillary. But he there were times that the, the campaign looked like it, he was headed in. He he was headed to the dustbin of history. Well, that's that's the uniqueness about this election is that both candidates' worst opponent in this election was, was the, themselves. Was correct. Absolutely. Correct. I mean, Hillary Clinton's uh, 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 problems were all self-inflicted. The one thing that Trump managed to do, which is traditional when it comes to politics, is turn the spotlight, as Michael said, on the other right. candidate. Right. Anytime you have a campaign where you can get people talking about what's wrong with your opponent versus even what's good about you – that's good. You want people to talk about what's good about you, but if you can get them to talk about what's bad about your opponent, you're winning that day. 77 WABC Radio presents Mind Your Business, hosted by founder and president of Bottom Line Marketing Group, Yitzhak Saflis. Mind Your Business focuses on business and marketing strategies for success. 